Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part four in a Symphony security and authentication series. In this one we're going to cover registering a user. Before we get to that let me just say that I record in high resolution so no need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. For this one there's going to be quite a lot of code involved because we need to register and authenticate a user, we need to create the record in the database, we need a registration form, we're going to send an email with a link for the user to confirm registration. This needs to be security protected and time protected and there's a few other considerations also. If I created a video for you to code along as I did all that stuff it will be well over an hour long and very few people would probably watch it on YouTube. But luckily Symfony has our backs and we can generate most of the code we need with a couple of commands. Then we can customise that code to our needs. So let's do that and I'll explain the code as we work through it. First thing I'm going to do is require the Symfony form component. So composer require Symfony forward slash form. So that will install lightning fast because I'm using Composer 2 and then what I do is I run a command to generate a registration form and that is symphony console make colon registration hyphen form. As you can see that's failed because before we do that we need to Composer require validator because a lot of the validation is going to be done for us out of the box. In fact all of it's going to be done for us out of the box. With that installed, let's try again and it'll ask you a series of questions. Question 1. Do you want to add a unique entity validation annotation on your user class? I'll go with yes. Then, do you want to send an email to verify the user's email address after registration? I'm also going to go with yes for this, just an extra bit of security and having selected yes, it lets me know that I'll need to install another component. Next question, would you like to include a user ID in the verification link? So I'm going to stick with the default no, which means that this registered user would have to be signed in when they click the confirmation link. Next question, what email address will be used to send registration confirmations? So we can put anything here, but I'll go with admin at securitydemo.com. Hit enter and what name should be associated with that email address and we'll just say security. Do you want to automatically authenticate after registration and I'll just hit yes for that. I'll need to install the couple of things that I was notified of so I need mailer and I need the verify email bundle. Now I'm going to take a look and see what's been installed. So I did a git commit before I installed all that stuff so I can just do git status and we'll ignore the top three for now. We've got registration controller. We've got this form folder because we've now got the form component, email verifier and also in templates we have this registration folder which will contain a couple of files, a registration form and an email confirmation. Let's have a quick high level look at our registration controller. So we've got two methods, one is register and it's for a route with the name of app register and obviously that's for registering uh, the users and the other route that we have is verify email. And that is for when you click on the link in the uh, registration verification email. I've tidied up the params for the register method and one by one from the top they are requests. So that's the HTTP request, user, password and coder interface. So we're going to use the user, password and coder to encode the password which gets sent from the registration form. Guard authentication handler or guard authenticator handler. We'll use that to log the user in once they've registered. And of course we're going to need our authenticator in order to do that which is our login form authenticator that we've worked on in the last three videos. Let me walk you through the flow or the sequence of events. So the first thing we do in all scenarios is we create a new user object. And so if you haven't seen how um, the Symfony form component works check out my form video I'll leave a link at the top. We create a form which is linked to an entity or an object and the fields on that form map to properties on that object. And we use a form type class, so in our case a registration form type class, to decide which fields we want to show and what mappings we want to have. Anyway, we have two logic paths here. One for submitting the form, which is what we're looking at now, and there's also one for displaying the form. So here we're first going to check is the form submitted and is the form valid. And the validation constraints 
we add them to the registration form type. Next, we're going to set the user password. So it will be submitted in plain text by the form. Then we encode it here and we set it on the user entity. Then all we need to do with the user is just persist and flush. This is the code for sending the um, registration confirmation email. I'm going to comment that out for now because that's a subject in itself. I just want to solve one problem at once. This last method here is just for logging the user in one successful registration. So that is the form submitted logic path. This is the other logic path. We just want to display a form on first visit if no form has been submitted. OK, so seeing as I'm not going to uh, send the email for now, I'm just going to comment out these lines of code in mailer.yaml because I don't want to throw errors. I've not set up mailer yet and I'm not actually sending mail just yet. Now let's go over to the registration form type. So this is where we build our form using PHP. So I'm in source form registration form type. And in this build form method, I'm injecting the form builder interface, which means that the container will give me a form builder object. And then off of that builder, I can chain these add methods and these will become the fields on my form. So the first one is email, fairly straightforward. That maps straight to my user object. The next one, agreed terms, as you can see, it says it's a checkbox type. And also, if you look at this, it says mapped is false, which means it doesn't map to a field on the uh, user object. In fact, it's just a form field with this validation constraint attached to it. And this constraint is, is true. So in this case, it means a checkbox has to be checked. And if not, validation fails. If it is checked, then validation passes. And that's all that that field does. The next one is plain password. So as you can see here, mapped is false. So this doesn't map to the password field on the user. This is just a plain password field on the form. And then the plain password field will get sent and um, encoded and then added to the user. And so a couple of constraints mustn't be blank and it must meet a minimum length. So this is what I was talking about there. As you can see, the password gets encoded and then it gets set on the user. I'm just going to tidy up this register method by collapsing out the commented out code. And I think what we'll do is we'll go and actually have a look at that form that we've just been creating with our form builder. So this is it. If you're unfamiliar with the syntax, check out my form component uh, recording. But you should be able to pick out what's going on here. We have form start and form end functions and the registration form gets passed into that. And then we have a form row for each of the fields which we added. And at the bottom here we have a um, submit button which I'm just going to give a bit of styling so it looks a bit more like a button. Next what I'm going to do is take a look at the user entity. So we've added a new field is verified. This defaults to false and basically until you click on the link in the registration verification email, the user will be unverified. Once you click that link, then this should be reset to true. Because we've got this new field, it means we need to create a new migration to do the alter statement on the table. So Symfony console doctrine migrations diff. That should create us a is verified field, which should be of Boolean type. Alter table user add is verified Boolean. Now you will probably have users already in your database if you've been following along, in which case this would throw an error. But we can overcome that by adding a default and giving it a default of false, which means that those existing records will now have a default value of false. Doctrine migrations migrate. That runs the migration. And if I look at my existing users now, as you can see, is verified, it's set to false on that. Let's go and check out the register form. What do you suppose is going to happen when I try and visit this? I'm redirected to login. And there's a very good reason for that. If you remember in our security YAML file, we set it so that any other route than login requires me to be logged in. So I need to also append register onto this. And then hopefully I should be able to visit register. And here we are at our register form. Not very pretty. I might tidy this up later. OK, a quick word on what we expect to happen once registered. So once registered, it's going to authenticate me using my login form authenticator. And if we remember, 
that will then redirect me to the home page so that's one thing we need to look out for I'm going to truncate my user table so there's no records in there because the record I had in there I'd entered manually so when I try and add another by registering I'll probably get an error with my Postgres sequence let's try registering now and so email password agree terms register and as you can see we are redirected to the home page when I refresh the database this is what I get so as you can see my um, ID for this record is at 9 because I've been having a little practice behind the scenes but if you note the is verified boolean is set to false and that's what we're going to take care of next the is verified boolean defaults to false and it only gets converted to true once a link is clicked in the registration confirmation email in order to be able to click that link we first need to be able to send the email and that's what this code does here so this send email confirmation method on the email verifier class it's quite clever and it's responsible for creating a signature which is made up of different components this gets written into the link which is part of the email and so this is the link here and as you can see we have this signed URL and so inside that signed URL it will comprise of an expiry timestamp and a signature which is used to check the user's credentials in order to send emails I'm going to set up a mail server I'm going to cheat a bit because this is a uh, registration lesson and not one on sending mail so I'm going to use docker and I'm going to use a mail catcher which will simulate having a mail server running so as you can see I've got a docker compose file which sits in my project root and I've been using this for my database you use whatever you want for your database and so I'm going to add another key underneath services which will be mailer I'll just convert that to lowercase so I'm going to need an image and I'm going to use something called shickling mail capture so you can find this on the uh, docker compose hub if you want to look for it there but that's how you spell it shickling forward slash mail catcher and then ports I'm just going to pass an array which will be 1025 and 1080 once I've done that there'll be a couple of steps to complete so I've currently got docker compose running so I'm going to run docker compose down and then I'm just going to run it back up again so docker compose up and then dash D which will run it in the background and as you can see there creating security demo mailer so that's my mailer service and in order to run my webmail I can use symphony open dot local dot webmail and then that opens this here's my mail catcher if you've ever used anything like MailTrap, it's similar to that it's a fake mail server so I'm going to log out and then I'm going to go back to the register page and we'll give this a try. So I'll register a different user this time, another user at example.com. Enter a password. Need to agree terms and then register. And so here we are on the home page. It's logged us in over to the mail catcher. And as you can see, we have a mail. And this is exactly what we're looking for. Hi, please confirm your email. And there you can see the confirm my email link, which is the all important component. Let's take a look at all the individual pieces of that link one by one. And so first off, we have the path, which is verify email. I'll show you that in the controller in a second. Then we have expires. So this will expire in an hour. And that is a little security measure. We have the unique signature, like we mentioned. And then we also have the token which is used to match against tokenized credentials over in the controller as you can see the path matches verify email this next line deny access unless granted so if you remember when we went through the process in the console of setting this up we said then that we wanted the user to be authenticated when we confirmed using the confirmation email link so I prefer to that way it seems a little bit more secure this next method, this is really where all the work takes place, handle email confirmation. It's actually the method inside of that, validate email confirmation. So first off, we check and see if the signed URL is a valid signature. Then we check that the timestamp is still in date. What we do then is we create a token with the user ID and user email. 
we grab the token from the signed URL and what we want to do with that is using the hash equals function we just check the two tokens against each other if they're not a match an exception is thrown and this fails and that's how it works really it, it doesn't return anything this method what it does is it just tries to throw exceptions and if an exception is thrown anywhere end of process if it goes through then it's all good news if it fails we catch a verify email exception we set a um, error message on the session and redirect to the register page if successful i think i'll change this so it redirects to the home page and that will be with a success key in my flash messages and thinking about that seeing as we have it we might as well use it so this success message here what we're going to do is we'll put it on our home page I'm going to borrow from the register.html.twig file because here it has a error message in the flashes so over to index.html.twig which is inside the templates app folder I'll paste that in instead of calling it flash error we'll actually call this flash success so we'll change that and we're looking in app flashes for a success key we'll change the uh, styling to alert success and obviously the message needs to be flash success and then with that I think we just need to go and click the link and see how we get on confirm my email and there you go redirected to the home page and we have the success message your email address has been verified which is the exact same message that we set on the flashes here okay so hope that was all understandable for you let's go over to the database and check this out and as you can see the is verified billion has now changed to true and that is the complete registration and registration confirmation process hope you've enjoyed it hope it's been understandable if you do have any comments questions or feedback please leave those down below if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself that's what good developers do one last thing if you want youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon i release new material every week details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my youtube channel homepage i'll see you in the next part